The Supreme Court overturns Roe v. Wade. The International Swimming Federation restricts trans swimmers. And the Valde Police Department's abject failure. Then more on this week's headlines. Welcome to America Uncovered. I'm Chris Chappell. A monkey dressed in a camouflaged jacket and tiny bulletproof vest was killed alongside 11 drug cartel members in a shootout in Mexico. In case you're wondering, I'm starting with this story so we know the news can't get any weirder from here. And with all these monkey shootouts happening, it's no wonder more people want guns to protect themselves. This week, the U.S. Supreme Court overturned New York State's concealed carry gun law. In a 6-3 decision by the court's conservative majority, the justices ruled that requiring people to demonstrate a particular need for carrying a gun in order to get a license to carry one in public violated the Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms. But also, how hard could it be to demonstrate a need for a gun in New York City? The rats alone are enough to convince me everyone should be allowed to walk around with flamethrowers. New York's concealed carry law was passed in the year 1911. It required individuals to demonstrate need in order to get a permit to carry a concealed handgun. Several states passed laws like this during the Jim Crow era, because in practice, they allowed officials to arbitrarily decide who could carry a gun and who couldn't. For example, in 1941, a judge wrote that similar gun restrictions in Florida were passed for the purpose of disarming the Negro laborers, and to give the white citizens in sparsely settled areas a better feeling of security. So while striking down New York's law is a big win for conservative gun rights activists, it's also a big loss for racist people. You know, this might wind up getting Democrats and Republicans to finally work together. I can't think of an issue both parties would love more than fighting racism with guns. Speaking of the Supreme Court overturning things, right before we recorded this episode, the Supreme Court officially overturned Roe v. Wade, meaning that states can now ban abortion. And Missouri was the first state to ban abortion. Fifteen minutes later. Again, since this just happened, we haven't had a chance to really look at this ruling yet or even write any good abortion jokes. So we'll have more on what the court actually said about Roe v. Wade and the fallout from the decision next week. Plus, some good abortion jokes. Last weekend at the Texas Republican Party convention, the Texas GOP adopted a measure in their official party platform to vote on seceding from the U.S. In it, they said, the federal government has impaired our right of local self-government. Texas retains the right to secede from the United States, and the Texas legislature should be called upon to pass a referendum consistent thereto. This call for secession might just be posturing to whip up support from their base. A state cannot legally secede. As late conservative Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia once wrote, if there was any constitutional issue resolved by the Civil War, it's that there is no right to secede. But if Texas does somehow secede on the bright side, that means Joe Rogan will technically be in another country. So then maybe news outlets can finally stop treating the opinions of a comedian who sells manscaped razors between bong rips as national news. The Texas GOP also passed a resolution stating that President Biden wasn't legitimately elected, claiming massive voter fraud and saying, we reject the certified results of the 2020 presidential election, and we hold that acting President Joseph Robinette Biden Jr. was not legitimately elected by the people of the United States. Shocking, I know. I mean, Robinette? That sounds like a name you'd give to Batman's sidekick sidekick. Threatening to secede, saying Biden isn't a legitimate president, it's like the Texas GOP's official platform is a YouTube comment come to life. More after the break. Welcome back. The CDC is now recommending COVID vaccine shots for children between the ages of six months and five years old. 
Normally this is where I'd make a joke, but this is such a divisive subject. The science on it is constantly being debated, and actual data is often cast aside in favor of pushing whatever narrative you prefer. So instead, let's move on to something a little less controversial that definitely doesn't do that. Transgender swimmers. The International Swimming Federation voted that male to female transgender swimmers will only be allowed to compete in women's races if they transition before the age of 12 or before reaching a specific stage of puberty. They also announced they will create a new open category that will welcome all swimmers that don't meet the requirements to swim in the men's or women's divisions. The International Swimming Federation, also known as FINA, said, FINA will always welcome every athlete. The creation of an open category will mean that everybody has the opportunity to compete at an elite level. It sounds like they came to this decision to try and make everyone happy. And of course, when you do that, you wind up making no one happy. Left-leaning media is calling this a ban, and it has many people upset. Others are calling it unscientific. Meanwhile, Fox News ran this banner on their site, saying FINA voted to allow transgender swimmers, which has a bunch of other people upset. And I'm upset too. Because since when has anybody cared this much about swimming? Can we please stop arguing over this and focus on a real sport? Like professional wrestling. Pro wrestling is objectively the best sport, because being transgender doesn't give you an unfair advantage. Nothing can, since the results are always predetermined anyway. The only thing that gives you a leg up is sucking up to the boss. There's never been any controversy in the wrestling world involving something like that. Oh. Never mind. Hillary Clinton said that Democrats should focus less on activist causes, such as trans rights and defunding the police, because it could cost them elections. Democrats should probably listen to her. Mostly because if anyone's an expert on losing a major election for the Democrats, it's Hillary Clinton. She explained, Look, the most important thing is to win the next election. The alternative is so frightening that whatever does not help you win should not be a priority. Some positions are so extreme on both the right and the left that they retreat to their corners. Politics should be the art of addition, not subtraction. Addition? Subtraction? Why, this sounds like math. And as some educators on the left are trying to prove, math is racist. Hmm. You know, I'm starting to think Hillary might be right, and focusing on causes like this won't win too many elections. And after the break, Ukraine's president welcomes a special Hollywood guest. Welcome back. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky met this week with Ben Stiller. Yes, that Ben Stiller. Turns out I was wrong when I said the monkey in the bulletproof vest was as weird as the news could get this week. Ben Stiller is a goodwill ambassador for the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. He visited Ukraine on World Refugee Day. Hopefully he was able to help. Zelensky said he needs supplies and maybe he can make ammunition out of blue steel. The war in Ukraine has contributed to gas reaching historically high prices. To combat that, President Biden announced he wanted to suspend the federal gas tax for three months, which could save consumers up to 18.4 cents a gallon. Doing this would require action from Congress, which means it probably won't happen. Relying on Congress to take action is like relying on your cat to win a spelling bee. That's just not what they do. That might be for the best, since some experts predict that suspending the gas tax could actually make inflation worse by driving up demand. That's right. The economy is so bad right now that making things cheaper would ultimately make them more expensive. The economy sounds ridiculous. This sounds like a nutritionist telling you to not bother going on a diet because it'll only make you fatter. Which is kind of true. Since a week of eating cauliflower buffalo wings only makes me crave real buffalo wings even more. With blue cheese and ranch. Oh, and of course, celery, since I'm watching my figure. I'm not surprised Biden called for this, though. With gas being as expensive as it is, Many people are choosing to ride bicycles instead. And as Biden learned earlier this week, bikes can be pretty dangerous. He wasn't hurt in this fall. And when asked about it, Biden said this was all Putin's fault. Hashtag Putin bike hike. Speaking of people slow to act in a crisis, the Baldi police force. 
The director of the Texas Department of Public Safety testified that the Uvalde police response to the school shooting last month was an abject failure. Abject failure? Wow, that seems pretty harsh. So what happened? Well, footage showed that officers entered the school three minutes after the gunman, but waited for around nearly an hour before engaging him. The Uvalde police claimed the shooter barricaded himself inside a room and locked the doors, but surveillance evidence now shows the officers didn't even attempt to open the doors until moments before the gunman was taken down. If they had, they would have found that the doors were, in fact, never locked. And even if the doors were locked, the officers had a forcible entry tool, but chose to wait for keys instead. Hmm. Did I say abject failure seemed harsh? I meant to say it seemed generous. And the first images released from within the school during the shooting showed that officers were armed with rifles and riot shields, which experts say was more than enough firepower and protection to engage with the gunmen. This contrasts with what Uvalde Police Chief Pete Arredondo reported when he called for backup, saying, We don't have the firepower right now. It's all pistols. The director of the Texas Department of Public Safety said there were plenty of officers to do whatever needed to be done, with one exception. The incident commander inside believed they needed more equipment and more officers to do a tactical breach at that point. Even officers at the scene questioned this, with body cam footage showing one officer with a ballistic shield saying, if there's kids in there, we need to go in there. Hmm. Did I say abject failure seemed generous? I meant to say that would be the best case scenario. Now, to play devil's advocate, perhaps this was a bureaucracy issue and the incident commander didn't know what the rules were for when he was allowed to order his officers into the room. After all, some police departments have insane rules, like in Chicago, where they're now no longer allowed to chase after people who are suspected of having committed misdemeanors. But this was a felony. Lives were at stake, children's lives, and they were fully equipped. What else was the incident commander waiting for? Game genie codes to give them super speed, mega jump, and infinite lives? An untrained pack of monkeys released in the school would have been more helpful and less afraid of engaging in action, even if they didn't have many bulletproof vests. The Uvalde police have their defenders, however, Texas Senator Roland Gutierrez filed a lawsuit against the Texas Department of Public Safety, alleging that they're blaming the Uvalde department but not telling the whole story. He said they want to give us snippets of body cam footage from the local police, but they want to hold on to their own body cam footage. And the mayor of Uvalde said he's been kept in the dark about the investigation. I've contacted them every day. I don't get a damn thing out of them. But considering how the police's story changed multiple times and this new evidence is showing the information they gave to be false, these complaints sound kind of like they're trying to cover up our cover up. Police Chief Pete Arredondo has been placed on administrative leave for the time being. If what this new evidence is suggesting turns out to be true, Arredondo shouldn't just be fired as police chief and lose his position on the city council in Uvalde, he should also be forced to legally change his name to Trash Fire McGillicuddy. That's an item in the Texas GOP platform we can all get behind. So what do you think about the stories we covered this week? Leave your comments below. And remember, America Uncovered is supported mainly by viewers. Be sure to visit patreon.com slash America Uncovered. Contribute a dollar or more per episode. We rely on your support to keep making great episodes. Or join our exclusive censorship-free social media community on Locals. Check out americauncovered.locals.com. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.